The lack of a Republican plan to actually reform health care, not just defeat the president's effort to do so, perhaps best embodied by party chairman Michael Steele. Yesterday, Chairman Steele seemed to follow the sausage-making memo from Alex Castellano word for word, if not step by step. And on MSNBC this morning, when Steele gave four suggestions for bringing down health care costs, Joe Scarborough tried to point out that those suggestions would not be enough to contain exploding health care costs. Those four issues will not cut costs. You're we, absolutely we wrong. Cu we cut costs. Joe, the, the, you, are you here telling me that if we do those you, four Joe, things, hold on did, a second, a, a, hold on. If we please, take those four spare steps, spare you? Yes, come I mean, come on. You, Give you me a CBO estimate of that. You mean to tell me, Joe, if you, don't do, if you do tort reform, you're not going to cut costs? Yes, you're going to cut costs. You're not listening you to my question. You just said those four things won't cut costs. No. They will. Except the four things cited by Michael Steele will not cut health care costs nearly enough. Chairman Steele did admit yesterday that policy is something he does not do. Also, how can you really trust someone on health care who does not even know what kind of health care insurance he actually has? What type of, of, of health insurance do you have? Do you get that through the RNC? Yep, through it, my employer. What, 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 what company is it? Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, I believe. All right. Chairman Michael Steele. Or maybe not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not sure. I think it's Blue Cross Blue Shield. For more on the effort to block health care reform, let's turn to Lawrence O'Donnell, contributor to the Huffington Post and former chief of staff of the Senate Finance Committee when it was chaired by the late Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. And Lawrence, good to see you. Good to be here, David. Would the Republicans, Lawrence, have more credibility on this issue if A, its party chairman knew what kind of health insurance he had, and B, if he did policy? Wow. Uh, it it re reminds you of the time when the first President Bush was caught uh, campaigning for, pre for election in 1992 uh, and not knowing the price of milk in America. Uh, for Michael Steele, he couldn't have appeared more out of touch with people who are worried about preserving their health insurance, people who don't have it, uh, people who have fought hard to get it and know exactly who their carriers are and what their deductibles are and how much they spend every year. I mean, that was as bad a moment as you could ask for, and, and watching Joe Scarborough take him apart was uh, a unique pleasure, watching uh, a Republican like Joe go after that party chairman better than I think any of us could have. <laughs> Lawrence, there's also a uh, RNC party memo that says the entire goal of the exercise is to slow this sausage-making process down in order to defeat it. Not fix it, defeat it. Is that the ugly truth, that there is no actual Republican health care plan? There isn't one that, that has any kind of consensus within the Republican Party. Certainly Chuck Grassley, the lead Republican in the Senate Finance Committee, is in favor of all sorts of the Obama uh, plan elements, but just not all of it. Uh, and there are others. Ron Wyden, Democrat on the Finance Committee, has a bill that no one's paying any attention to that does have real uh, bipartisan support. Uh, but there isn't something that Republicans are rallying around saying, this is our alternative. And, uh, and they are now in a tactical position where where they don't really need one because the Obama plan is now on a curve downward in popularity in the polls. Everyone's noticing that in both parties. Uh, and so the Republicans really can stand back and watch Obama, in effect, campaign for health care against himself. That's what happened to Hillary Clinton last time around. What, what happened was Hillary Clinton was unable uh, in her campaign to sell the plan to the public. She was unable to do that. And the more she tried, the more the popularity of her plan went down. So we, we've seen this before. And on that point of a resistance also coming from Democrats, as we mentioned, the Washington Post reports that Finance Committee Chairman Max Baucus has received nearly $1.5 million from health-related companies and their employees. As a former chief of staff of the Senate Finance Committee, does that seem to you to be a huge conflict of interest? Well, look, he was running for election uh, in this last election in Montana, which is not an easy state uh, for Democrats to hold on to. Uh, I've worked with him when I was at the Finance Committee, worked closely with him. He, his integrity has never been questioned uh, in this area. And you cannot simply, in my experience, match up someone's campaign contributions and think you then know what they're willing to do legislatively. Charlie Rangel, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, the, the uh, counterpart to the Finance Committee, uh, he represents New York City, where the number one 
industry is actually health care. Not a lot of people quite realize that. He has a lot of health care contributions, and he has gotten a bill out of his committee, which uh, a lot of people in the health care sector don't like, and some do like. Uh, you know, and, and Chairman Baucus is now in favor of things that are far to the left of what Barack Obama campaigned on, like an individual mandate. Obama campaigned against that. An employer mandate. Obama campaigned against that. Uh, taxation of benefits, uh, health care benefits. Obama campaigned against that. So, so Baucus is actually out to the left of Obama on a few things. It's very hard to tell how those uh, campaign contributions affect it. Great point. Lawrence O'Donnell of MSNBC and the Huffington Post. Lawrence, thanks as always. We appreciate you coming on today. Thanks, David.